Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Palace of Mystery stage a performer who's entertained kings, queens, and presidents. Give it up for Magic Castle favorite, Mr. Tom Burgoon. Welcome to Magic Castle. My name's Tom Burgoon. I'll be your host and MC for this evening's festivities. And before we get started tonight, please let's have a nice big round of applause for your featured entertainers, the amazing David Sandy and the wonderful Victor and Diamond. Give it up for those guys. My name is Tom Burgoon. I'm a professional magician, comedian, shoplifter, practical joker. Dominic, let's get a little warm out here, dude. Thanks, dude. All right, get these off. Here. That's better. My friends, your opening act this evening uh, travels around the world putting on wonderful magical events for magicians and laymen. It's just too much. This guy is amazing. He's my best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please bring him to the stage, the amazing David Sandy. Thank you. How is everyone tonight? Feeling good? All right. Welcome to the Magic Castle. My name is David Sandy. I come from Kansas City, Missouri. Very good. You know, back in Kansas City, when people find out, find out I'm a magician, they'll come up to me and they think they're being funny. They'll say, hey, Mr. Magician, can you make my wife disappear? I hear that one all the time. But I always politely laugh as though it's the first time. But uh, it does tell me that people are interested in magicians making things disappear. So what I thought I would do tonight is before I get started with my act, I would do the obligatory disappearing thing trick. I make something disappear and then we get on with the show. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. All right, perfect. Sir? If that is your real name, <laughs> I have a paper sack. I would like you to examine the sack, make sure it's completely empty for me. All right, very good. Check it out. Look, reach inside, reach inside. Go ahead, check it thoroughly. Reach inside. Reach in. I tell you what the heck, let's just go ahead and pass it all the way down this side of the aisle. Everybody check it out across the back. When it comes back to you, ma'am, you're going to hand it to me. I will do a miracle with a paper sack. How's that sound? <laughs> I can tell you're thrilled. <laughs> Okay. Everyone reach inside, reach inside. Where is it? Where did it go? It already disappeared. Yes. I tell you what, in the interest of time, while you're examining that sack, I'm just going to do the trick of the sack. You guys are way too... Too thorough. Come on, stay with the program, people. It's an empty sack. Sir, it's a souvenir. Keep it. We've got... Yeah. Our budget will allow you to keep it. All right, empty, right? How many beer drinkers in the crowd tonight? Perfect, perfect. How many Budweiser beer drinkers in the crowd? Yeah. That's what I'm from Missouri, Anheuser Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. You know, I've got to like some team. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Here's what's gonna happen. I put the bottle of Bud in the bag just like that. Just a moment. I'm going to try to cause the bottle of beer to disappear into thin air. This is so good. I wish I could sit out there and watch it myself. <laughs> A bottle of beer in the sack, just like that. Here we go. I wave my hand once, twice, three times. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, the bottle has vanished into thin air as if by real magic. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll, I'll check to make sure. Yes, it's completely gone. Come on, people, I'm working on okay? it. I know what you're thinking, sir. I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, that's a pretty darn good trick. But if this guy were really a good magician, he could make it come back. <laughs> For you, I will try, sir. I, I snap my fingers over the empty sack just like that. Get ready to be amazed. I reach inside. Oh, look at that. Put them up. Are you, sir? I mean, sitting there with that judgmental look on your face. You, know, you don't actually think the bottle left the sack in the first place, do you, sir? No, I don't. Uh, yeah, no. She's shaking her head. She answers for you all the time, doesn't she? I, can tell. I tell you what, for you, I will do it one more time. This time, after it disappears, I will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt there's no bottle in this bag. Fair enough? All right, deal. Here we go. Bottle of beer in the bag, just like this. Just for you, sir. Watch closely. I wave my hand once, twice, three times. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the bottle has disappeared into thin air like a fading mirage in the desert. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. There's no bottle in the bag, seriously. Yeah, go ahead and put your glasses on, sir. That's good. Thanks for joining the show. There's no 
bottle in the bag. Let me prove it to you. No bottle. Seriously, seriously. Check this out. No bottle in here. Watch this. <laughs> I think you people just don't like oh. bottles. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I was doing some reading the other day, and, and science tells us that two solid objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Science also tells us that one solid object cannot pass through another solid object. That's what science says. But here at the Magic Castle, we take the impossible and make it seem possible. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Bring this out here just like this. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a demonstration of solid through solid. The first solid object in the demonstration will be a sheet of diamond plate steel, which I have here in the framework. Let me go ahead and open it up so you can take a closer look and check it all out. All right, here we go. There it is. I'll step down into the house here. Sir, would you like to examine that? Go ahead and touch it. Pound on it. That's all you got there? <laughs> Okay, touch it, feel it, make sure it doesn't bend, it doesn't fold. Oh, sir, you get into your work. I like that. A little pressure. <laughs> feel free to touch it if you want to. Make sure everything looks... Yes, yes. Sir, I'm getting to you. I can tell you're excited. Here. Go ahead, touch it, feel it, caress it if you like. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Lady... Ladies and gentlemen, a solid sheet of diamond plate steel, 12 and a half inches high, 25 inches wide. That's the first object. The second object would be these rock hard abs. Yeah. Alright, get everything in place here. Check this out. position myself directly behind the sheet of steel, just like this. In just a moment, for your entertainment, I'm going to attempt to walk through a sheet of steel. Wish me luck. very much. Uh, hey, let me share, let me share a little uh, background story about myself. Um, at the beginning I said I was from Kansas City, the Midwest, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway, this happened when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, true story, true story. I was at my grandparents for the weekend, and it was a Saturday afternoon. Open up the TV Guide and listed in the TV Guide, 2 o'clock, the Masters of Magic TV show. Now, keep in mind, back in those days, we didn't have cable or a direct or dish or anything like that, so we didn't see a lot of magic on TV because we only had three channels, whatever came over the air. So I was really excited. I'm a kid. I'm going to get to see magic on TV. Anyway, I sat down in front of the TV at 2 o'clock. My grandpa's in his easy chair. He's going to watch with me. The magic show begins. All these magicians did these incredibly magical things. But ladies and gentlemen, there was one magician on that show that did something I will remember till the last day that I live. He came out on stage, introduced his assistant, then he made a little table, or altar if you will, a little place for her to lie down. Got it all assembled. Then she would lie down on this little table, he stood behind her, and very mysteriously, he waved his hands over the top of the lady as if hypnotizing her, or putting her into a magical sleep. Then after he did that, he reached under, and he pulled the table out from under her, Ladies and gentlemen, that lady remained suspended or floating in midair. It was the most magical thing I had ever seen. And at that point, my grandpa, sitting in his easy chair, looked down over the top of his reading glasses, and he said to me, David, the day you can do that trick, then I'll be impressed. <laughs> well, you know, impressing my grandpa was pretty important, so I immediately went home, ran out to the garage, grabbed a hold of some scrap lumber, some step ladders, anything I could find in the garage that I could make work. 
I put it all together, kind of built this little makeshift table there in the center of the garage, best I could. Got it all set up, stood behind it, looked across the, cro across the top of it, looking around the garage, imagining an audience of a couple hundred people out there anticipating what I was about to do. After I got it all set up, I went into the house, and I convinced my little sister to join me in the garage. <laughs> She came out and I talked her to lying down on this contraption. I stood behind her and I wiggled my hands over the top of her just like that, just like the magician on TV did. Then I reached underneath and with a dramatic flare, I yanked the table out from under her. Well, man, that was the last time my sister ever agreed to help me in the magic show. It just didn't work. Then a magician a few years later taught me the secret of levitation. And tonight at the Magic Castle, I would sh like to share that illusion with you. But instead of causing my little sister to levitate, I thought it'd be a heck of a lot more fun if I could cause one of you to levitate. Yeah! Yeah! Very good. There we go. Very good. You step over onto that side. I'll stand here next to you. Very good. Older than your little sister. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I might surprise you. <laughs> what is your first name? Laura. Laura. Actually, her name was Lori. So that's very oh close. God. Yeah. Very good. Laura, I have to ask you. At any point during your life, where there's a little girl or is an adult, have you ever had any dreams or fantasies of flying or floating in midair? No. <laughs> You'll help me tonight, though, won't you? Absolutely. All right, I promise you I've got it mastered. It works every time, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Laura, and I would like to pre present to you the illusion of levitation. I actually brought a few things from the garage. <laughs>
here for the lovely and very talented Laura. There she is, Laura. Come on, take a bow, Laura. Take a big bow. All right, here she comes. Right back here. Watch yourself. Very good. Come on, one more round of applause for Laura. Yes. Great job. Hey, before I leave, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you here this evening, whether it's a child or maybe as an adult, have ever wished upon a star? Let me see your hands. Be honest. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's usually about half the crowd. I, too, once upon a time wished upon a star. As I mentioned earlier, I grew up on a farm in northwest Missouri. And one evening, as a six-year-old child, at about dusk, I stepped outside of my parents' farmhouse, stood on the front porch, looked up in the sky, and there I saw it. Not the first star of the evening, but a full moon. It was big, it was round, it was golden orange, and it was beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recreate that childhood memory for you in closing here this evening using a napkin, just a cocktail napkin. Here's what I propose to do. In just a moment, I'm going to take this napkin and fold it a few times. And then after folding it, I'll tear it just once in an attempt to tear a circle out of the center of the napkin. That circle representing that full moon I remember as a child of six, 45 years ago. Watch.